Whether you're looking for answers to specific life questions or just seeking to become the best version of you possible, welcome to the Mental Breakdown and Psych Reg Podcast, where we offer insight, information, and strategies based upon research and years of practice as clinical psychologists. So sit back, have a listen, and get connected with our hosts, Dr. Bernie Wilkinson and Dr. Richard Marshall. Welcome back. Today's show, we're going to talk about laws and rules and yes finally <laughs> all those kinds of Fine. things right now I'm, I'm gonna say this a lot of times when we talk about when we bring up the topic you say finally there's a lot of things that you want to talk about isn't there you you, you like <laughs> talking about a lot of these script but, um, <laughs> let me think for a second you like talking about a lot of these things because you, you know, know i really say finally a lot you do because but that's okay because it, it, you know what it does to me it reminds me of yes, why I, we do I do. <laughs> Why we do these I podcasts do now. I didn't know to begin now, with? But I did too. Well, we started these podcasts because you and I sit here, um, not necessarily in front of a camera or anything, but we sit here most mornings and we have conversations about some of these different things, and we think, um, man, we really need to talk to other people about this. We need to let other people need to know some of this stuff and talk about some of these things too, and and so I think that that's why you say finally. Today's I surprised you. Today's <laughs> no, I, I would hit you, but today's fine. There was a meaning by it behind okay. today's. Today's finally had a very specific meaning. Okay. Today's finally was finally, finally, we're getting close to mental health parity. Yes, we, we are. We've been in this business. I've been in this business a very long time. You've been mm-hmm. in it a pretty long time. Yeah, getting there. You know, you're getting. I'll catch up with you one day. No, you no, no, um, but. We have been waiting for parity for several decades, right. and we keep hearing that. When we say parity, we mean that um, the the equity between mm-hmm. physical health and mental health coverage by um, third right. party payers, right? And whether it's the government or insurance companies, whoever's making the payments, and there has always been a disparity between physical health coverage and mental health coverage. Right. Physical health coverage, you get covered for that, but mental health coverage was treated somehow differently. Right. And for several decades now, we, we keep getting told that there will be parity between the two. It keeps not happening. Right. Okay. Um, now, I think We're getting in close. the new millennium, mm-hmm. um, I think that laws are being passed which, which have rules attached mm-hmm. to them, which are going to really finally, that's what the finally was worth finally move us closer to parity yeah yeah i I think that i I was first i I was first introduced Mm -hmm. to sort of the the i guess you would just say the power of the insurance company like back in the in the mid to late 90s when i was working in the department of psychiatry and i remember you know i I remember working with dr silver who i've mentioned Mm -hmm. on the podcast before he was this um he was older he was older than you he was like as unbelievable as that is i don't know how that happens but there he are was a few left who are older than he, he was he was practicing in he was in his late 80s at the time yeah and i remember you know this guy has 50 years of of experience as a physician mm-hmm. you know he 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 was a physician in world war 2 uh he yeah. he retired from new york university he's now about to retire from the university of south florida and he diagnosed this kid with a couple of things that were going on because it was it happened to be his specialty. And, and the insurance sent back a thing and said, um, "We don't provide, we don't, we don't right. reimburse for services for that disorder." Right. And I remember thinking, Wh- "What? Here's this guy who's Here, been at it for fifty years, right? And, and for we- some reason, they don't reimburse for treatment for that condition. And right. and, and it like it was, it was Tourette's disorder." Was it really? Yeah, it was Tourette's disorder. He, wow. he, the kid had Tourette's disorder with co, um, a, a co-occurring ADHD, sure. and so he had to wow. he had to change the primary do- diagnosis to ADHD for the kid to be able to get coverage because otherwise the the, the child amazing. and family wouldn't be able to. So Tourette's was considered a mental. Wow. Yeah, it, it was it was it was for whatever reason for that child's uh, coverage it was not uh, included. So. Mm-hmm. That was my introduction to this idea that you know the the insurance companies really play a large uh, ha- have a big say in what kind of treatment right. a person can get or what kind of treatment a person can't get. What right, right. And, and so 
in in, in mm-hmm. light of what you were mentioning, I, I, I almost well, it was just over a decade ago, right? Or just almost a decade ago. Uh, it was in two thousand eight. Two thousand eight. That the right. mental health parity and addictions law, I think, right. was the name of it. Ah, right. Mm-hmm. Um, was was signed and started as a way to get us toward, closer right. to some equity between the way in which physical conditions are are managed and the way that mental health conditions are managed. That's right. In 2008, we had the first law that really began moving us Mm -hmm. in that direction. Now, the trouble with many of these laws, and this happened in special education, you can write a law, Mm -hmm. but until you fund it adequately, um, nothing much happens. Until you write the rules and how will this thing be implemented. For example, with special education law, the law was passed in 1975, mm-hmm. but it wasn't implemented until 1978. Right. You know, so so it takes a while to work out the implementation and funding mm-hmm. of these things. But the the regulations were set down um, in 2008. Right. Right. And they weren't signed until, or it was it was signed, but it wasn't um, the rules and everything weren't really formulated until like 2013. And that's why as psychologists we keep waiting to find right. back to finally. Right. Um we keep because we like okay, 2008 we finally have parity. Right. Well, not not exactly, not really. you know, not exactly. We had to wait until 2013 mm-hmm. for the rules um funding and implementation. Right. Um, and even then, but then that's it still right. wasn't not it, quite there yet. Right. Mm-hmm. Because I know that e- even today there are there are many things that that we attempt to do need to you know as far as trying to implement research-based interventions and strategies and assessment uh, procedures for individuals with various mental health conditions right and the insurance company will come back and say nope can't do that nope we're not gonna we're not gonna cover that sorry mm-hmm. um, you or, know I, I remember having this uh, I had this huge discussion with a fellow uh, from the insurance company um, about ADHD. I remember you that. You know, I was yeah. going to do mm-hmm. some, I was going to do testing for the child to determine and identify ADHD. Mm-hmm. And, you know, best practices is, now I'm, it's best practices that with, for an ADHD assessment that you look at, actually look at the skills. You do mm-hmm. a direct assessment to, you know, identify the skills. You right. rule out other things and then you, you find it. Um, you know, the, the, the common practice is questionnaires. Uh, you know, right. we, we ask about parent symptoms, and parent mm-hmm. and teachers fill out questionnaires, and that, right. that's pretty much it. But best practices is to do to do an assessment. And so we were going to do a, an evaluation, and the mm-hmm. insurance company says that, well, we only approve that kind of testing for uh, neurologically-based disorders. And I said, <laughs> well, a- ADHD is very well known we to know. be a mm-hmm. uh, neurologically-based disorder, and I right. decided to – I chose to uh, – inform him about some of those neurologically based uh, uh, findings and and he go he says I know what you're saying I understand what you're saying oh, so he oh, but okay we don't see it that way and I said well tell me what you mean he says well we go by the uh, American Academy of Pediatrics and um, their their rules for evaluating ADHD and I said um, well then you might refer to subpart sub uh, paragraph three where mm-hmm. it talks about and he goes, yeah, we just don't see it that way. <laughs> and that was the bottom line. And and I'm thinking, you know, we really right. need to, because this kid was complicated, he, right. he he needed some additional testing because questionnaires in and of themselves remained very vague. It remained very um, mixed as it relates to what was really going on. And again, it's just, and, and that just happened a, a few months ago. So, so some of these issues continue. Now, we do have another it's new another layer. Um, another new development that will hopefully continue to move us in the positive <laughs> direction, and that is the 21st Century Cures Act. Um, and that, signed in? Uh, signed in 2016. 20, that's right, 2016. Right. So we have 08, 13, and now 16. Right. So this is another guarantee, assurance, move. In that direction. Tease. Tease in that direction. But what's the problem? It's well, part of. Yeah, it, it, it is. I don't know how. It's hard to tell how closely tied it is to it's, the Affordable Care Act. But it seems to be. I went to a talk by a school district mm-hmm. that said there is money in the Affordable Care Act that has been targeted for mental health services 
in the school. Okay. Right. And that must be this no. 21st century it could be moving in that act. Direction. Because there's money set aside. It's earmarked specifically for use by school districts mm -hmm. uh, for these children who have mental illness and can't get treatment anywhere else. Right. Okay. However, that's been linked to the Affordable Care Act. Right. So as we speak, right. in fact, last night, um, the, the Senate and House have started the process of dismantling right. the Affordable Care Act. So what will happen in the future now, we're, we're just not sure. Right. You know, right. It's one of those uncertainties that, um, that everybody's talking about. We, we don't right. really know what's going to happen now. And I, and I think that there's, there's <clears throat> it, it's so unfortunate because we know that it can work. Yeah. You know, we, we right. ha and, and we have examples of it here in the United here States and, and, and overseas. Right. So here in the United States, uh, you know, I remember a couple of years ago, I went up and visited a uh, hospital yeah. in, uh, in Rhode, Rhode Island. Island. Rhode Island. Yeah. And that, now, Rhode Island is is smaller than the county we live in here mm -hmm. in, in Florida. Mm -hmm. But um, nonetheless, the, the, the state decided that they right. would put money into the school system mm -hmm. to cover mental health services. And right. so a lot of schools have mental health prof uh, professionals. Mm -hmm. They have, uh, they, they have in some of the schools, they have entire classrooms That's right. that are led by mm -hmm. mental health professionals or in, uh, teachers who have mental health training that can manage you know, children with behavioral and emotional difficulties and the, mm -hmm. the kids that, and, and they have psychiatrists that go to the schools and, and, and provide treatment that the parents don't have to pay for. When I was at the University of Texas in Austin, um, it was in the 90s, early, middle 90s, and a movement had just started, a new movement had just started called Full Service Schools, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. where schools provided... Um, Immunizations, right. nursing care for kids, dental in care, dental vision care, care, yeah, and mental health care right. for kids living in that area. So parents could actually come to school after school mm -hmm. or in the evening to access mental yeah. health services they couldn't get anywhere else. That died a quick and painful death yeah. um, after a couple of years. Mm -hmm. The issue, of course, is funding. Right? Yeah. Who who pays for this? So we were very excited when we got to the new millennium. And these new parity laws began to appear. Right. And once again, however, with the change in administration, um, we're not sure what's going to happen right. to this, especially right. the funding part. Right. So. Now, another great example <clears throat> yeah. actually is happening uh, mm -hmm. over, over in the United Kingdom, right. uh, over in England, where it was just there was just an article released um, or, or published within the last yeah. week. Mm -hmm. um, I think it was. Oh well, it was. I have it right here on the screen. Right. January 9th. Where they were talking about uh, every um, teacher, it says it says that teachers in all secondary schools to be offered mental health training. And so, right. what the the plan is, it seems that all the teachers in secondary schools will mm -hmm. receive some education and some training in in identifying and managing mental health conditions and right. issues in children. It's comparable to our um, first responder training. Right. You know that we're right. we're beginning to train first responders in mental health. Because many of the problems they encounter um, are really mental health problems. Right. They're not right. criminal behavior. It's it's um, yeah, emotional disorders, mental right. behavioral disorders that really should be managed very differently. Absolutely. Um, so hopefully these are signs mm -hmm. uh, that times are changing. Right. Um, but um, but it's important to keep up with what's going on in Washington these days because the fate of real mental health parity now rests right. with the um, Congress right. and the new president. Right. So, so you know, <clears throat> if, you, if you see anything about it, if you, if you hear people talking about it, mm -hmm. if you can just educate yourself about it, it would be, would be great and, and, and make sure that you're communicating, right. you know, these things to your, your representatives because it, it's, that's how it's going to happen. It is conceivable. I just, it is conceivable that if you have mental health coverage now, if the Affordable Care Act is dissolved, that you might come in for your next, it could be that you could come in for your next appointment. It may not be covered. I don't know. I don't know. We'll find I out. I don't know how quickly that will happen. There is an organization called the National Alliance of Mental Illness, NAMI. 
they're sort of keeping tabs on this whole mm -hmm. thing. So if you want to, if you want a very readable, um, if you want a, an, an easy way to keep up with this, these issues, mm -hmm. uh, you may want to go to the NAMI website um, because they seem to have their finger on the pulse of this issue. Uh, because as patient advocates, this would be very important yeah. for them. So you may want to keep tabs on this thing, at least as it's working its way through the new Congress. Yeah. So. Yeah. And, and we'll do our best to, to keep up with it yeah, as well. We'll try it, to keep up to you date. Know, it's, ever-changing and it's tough to keep up it's with keep and, up. and you know some of the stuff is just so difficult to understand I mean they it's and it's so frustrating the way that things are tied to other things so yeah. it's like you know oh this little piece here you know, if you approve <laughs> that then you know hey we'll give all third graders guns and somewhere there's a little fine print that say well that's not really what we meant exactly you know, so. exactly that's or, or there's this little provision that nobody really read but somebody digs it out when right. you least expect it. So, right. or, so we'll or do again, our best. Or again, they, they tie something to it that like nobody would vote for. <laughs> and and it's like, well... I didn't know. I, we don't want that piece. We want this piece, but we don't want this piece. And oh, well, no, they, they, these guys are... These things are written together. So, so hopefully, who was ever making these decisions in Washington will not forget that mental health care should be on a par with physical health yeah. care. Yeah. Uh, just as important. Yeah. Um, so we'll keep an eye on it. We'll try to keep you up to date. Yeah, absolutely. So <clears throat> that's it for today. We'll be back with Wednesday. another episode. So make sure that you uh, come back, check back off, and, and uh, you know, subscribe, follow, uh, all that good stuff and wherever if, we are. And if you have any access to this information, please let us yeah. know. Um, help us stay up to date. Help us stay informed. Absolutely. So until next time, I'm Dr. Bernie. Dr. Richard. Stay happy and healthy. Don't forget to be afraid. Thank you.